Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. So I recently just released my new sample pack called Voices. It's got 10 royalty free samples that you guys can use if you need some more inspiration with your own beats. And pretty much every single loop in the sample contains some sort of vocals. So I actually got a lot of questions from you guys on how I mix and blend my vocal samples together with the loop. So today I'm pretty much going to show you guys all the secrets that I'm going to be using when I'm making my own vocal samples. So it can enhance both the atmosphere and the emotional vibe we get from the vocals together with the other instruments in the sample. So I'm first just going to break down one of the samples from the pack and then I'm also going to make a beat over it at the end. So make sure to stay to the end of the video to see all the tips and tricks when it comes to the sample and I'm also going to show you guys some crazy tricks you can do for the drums as well. So let's not waste any more time let's just get straight to it. All right so I'm here in FL as you guys can see here is the voices sample pack and just like I said it's got some crazy sounding samples in there but now in today's video I'm going to break down this first sample called voices right here. So the sample really has both this greedy and emotional vibe to it. But it still sounds very catchy. And the sample also has different parts to it. So it's super easy to differentiate between the hook and the verse. So to start off with, we're going to focus on the first sound. And the first sound I started off with was this Noir Pure Piano in Contact. The only thing I switched was actually I went to this arrow and this Grand Piano section right here. Then I just went down to this Emotional preset and used this one. And that was basically the only change I did for the piano. And this is how the pattern looks like. So it's a basic pattern, but we have some switch ups right here. So as you guys can see, it's actually a very basic pattern. But since the chords fit so well together, it actually creates this amazing sounding atmosphere. So I'm going to show you guys how we can make something similar to this pattern right here. So I'm actually just going to delete the whole pattern and then we can make something similar from scratch. So the BPM is 142 right here and the scale we're working in is A minor. So since we're working in A minor, we actually want to start off with this A note right here. Now there are a few tricks to this chord progression, but the first one is actually to extend the first chord all the way right here. So the first chord is going to be pretty long, so we're actually going to have it for two bars instead of one, what we would usually do. So we're actually going to have it for these two bars right here. Now we want to make an A minor chord, but we actually want to delete this middle note. And then we're just going to copy this same A note, but we're going to pitch it up by two octaves. And this is pretty much our first chord. Now, very importantly, before we add the next chords, we actually want to go into this a little bit and we want to strum them manually. So I'm just going to highlight this E note and hold Alt on my keyboard. And then we can just move it slightly off grid with our mouse. Do the same thing for this A right here. Just move it slightly off grid. This is going to give it the more natural and realistic sounding strum effect. So now for the next chords, we're actually just going to copy over this A right here. But this time we want to shorten it just for one bar. Now we're going to pitch this down by four semitones. And then we're going to skip the first highlighted note and press it on the second second one. So we're pretty much keeping this A consistent right here. Then we're just going to copy this E over, shorten it again to one bar, and then we're actually just going to pitch this up by one octave. Again, just remember to go in and strum these notes right here. So now we have two chords for the chord progression, but the trick is actually to only have three chords in a four bar pattern like this. So we want to have a last chord right here. And for this last one, we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing as we did right here. Just this time, we're actually just going to start on this E note right here. Again, skip the first highlighted note and press on the second one. Then we're just going to copy this E over, but we're going to pitch it down by two semitones. So now our chord progression sounds like this. So the chords pretty much go perfectly together. Now we just want to copy this over, but we need to switch it up a bit on the second part. So we actually don't want to overcomplicate it. We're just going to add some top notes just so we can add some more movement to the sample. So since this is actually going from this A to this D, as you can see, it's going downwards. So it's pretty nice to add some accent notes that are going downwards as well. So we can add a note right here and one here. It's pretty much following the downwards pattern, as you can see. We can just add some more notes over here. So that is pretty much how you can make something super similar to the piano pattern I had in the sample. Now I'm just going to delete this and pretty much paste my original pattern back. So now let's go over the effects for the piano. So to start off with, I just had this roam at about 24%. And then I also had this coarse delay plus coarse echo effect in effect track. This is pretty much the source for this piano sample right here. So if you haven't checked out the preset, you can just go in here and go on to delays. And it's going to be the fourth one right here. The only change I actually did was I went to this mixer tool right here. And I just put it at about 40%, which was actually more than 
than enough. Then I just had this vinyl 3 preset in RC20 as well. All I did was I just turned up the follow a little bit on the noise. And recently I've actually been messing with the stereo button on the wobble. Then I also lowered the magnitude to about 40% as you can see right here. Lastly, this EQ is also super important. So I've pretty much cut out all the low frequencies to about 100 hertz right here. And then you also really want to mess around with these frequencies right here at about 280 to 310. I really felt like these frequencies made the piano a bit boxy and a bit muddy as well. So this is the piano without the EQ. And with the EQ on, it sounds like this. So you definitely don't want to overdo it with the EQ, but it's definitely enough to make the sound a bit better. So that was pretty much the piano melody. Now let's get on to the vocals. So this is how the vocals sound by themselves. So the vocals are actually from Splice. So you can just go in here and maybe type in something like vocal. And then you can just look around and see if you can find something that sounds nice. That was pretty much what I did for the vocal. But now the vocal sounds pretty nice, but this wasn't actually how it sounded to start off with. So to be fair, this is actually the original vocal right here. This is what I so you can actually hear it sounds completely different to how I made it turn out. So the first step to making this vocal fit perfectly with the sample is obviously that we need to find a part in the vocal sample that we really like and that we feel like we can loop over again. So I pretty much like this part right here. So I actually use this part of the vocal for the sample. But a really nice trick for vocals that I've been using recently is actually not to start the vocal immediately when the sample starts playing. And what I mean by that is that you would usually hear producers starting the vocal sample right here where the loop pretty much starts. Now this of course works too, but I actually found that the sample sounds way better if you pretty much delay the vocal a little bit because then the vocal comes in a bit later to the sample and it just gives it even more life. So this is how the original vocal sounds together with the piano. So you can hear the vocal has a lot of noise in the background and there are some parts that are way louder than the others. So a very, very nice trick you guys can do now in FL21 is if you feel like some parts are a bit louder than the others in the sample, you can actually just cut that part of the vocal. So I'm going to cut this part since I thought this part right here, since I actually thought that this section of the vocal was way, way louder than this one and this one. So I'm just going to use this button knob right here and just turn it down at about 3 dB, I think is nice. You can even see the waveform lowering right there. And the great thing about this is actually that if you double click you can see it doesn't change anything on the volume right here and it doesn't even change anything on the mixer either it pretty much just changes this highlighted part right here so that's a super nice thing with fl21 but we still need to add some effects to this vocal so we can make it blend together with the piano so i started off with this sound shifter i just pitched it up by 12 semitones so it's basically just one octave higher And then I just added this Echo Boy. It's pretty much just to give it some delay so it's nothing special, just standard settings right there. And then this Roam at about 32% just to give it some more reverb and atmosphere. But lastly, and probably the most important thing is this EQ right here. So you can pretty much see I've cut out all the high frequencies right here and all the low frequencies as well. So that pretty much makes the vocal fit perfectly together with the piano. Now I actually just added a sound from Arcade as well. I wanted this sound to sound as similar to the vocal as possible, but while still having some sort of difference to it. So I just copied the same exact effects from the vocal over to this sound, but I made sure the sound was a bit different from the vocal. So that is also a super nice trick you guys can do if you're struggling from A part to a B part. It just makes the whole process way easier as well. The last two things I added was just this texture and this perk loop. So I actually just went over to my Imperial one shot kit right here and I went to these textures. Then I just used this flute texture and it sounds like this. And then I also went to the perk loops in the same Imperial one shot kit and I just chose this perk loop 14 right there. They may sound a bit subtle but when it comes together with the whole sample it definitely makes a difference.
So that is pretty much the breakdown of the sample. Now I'm just going to drag in the sample to a new FL file and I'll show you guys how super easy it is to make a nice beat over it. Now, as you guys know, I always leave out the stems at the end of the sample just so you can chop it up super easily. And then you can pretty much just arrange them under each other right here just so it's super easy to do a different structure. So if you've just done this and you're maybe struggling with some clicking noises, you can actually just double click on a sample and change this to generic bleeding right there. This is pretty much going to fix all those issues. So now I think it's time to put some crazy drums over this sample. So all the drum sounds I'm using are coming from my No Limit Drum Kit. So if you guys want to use the same drum sounds as me in this video, or you need some nice sounding drum sounds, you can just go check it out using the link down below. Before I add the drums, I'm actually going to pitch down the sample about two semitones and see how that sounds. Yeah, I like how it sounds when I pitch down by two. So since we just pitched down the sample, I'm just going to open up the EQ and turn down those low frequencies a bit. Then I'm just going to start off with an open hat. So I think I'm going to use this fresh one since it's a bit longer and the sample is more emotional. For more trappy stuff, I usually like going for short open hats. But for this one, I'm going to use a longer one right here. And then I actually also feel like using a rim for the clap this time. Now let's go for a hi-hat as well. Oh, this ending right here is nice. So I really like this hi-hat pattern, but we definitely need to switch up a little bit of the velocity. And then I actually also want to lower some of the notes. So the easiest way to do this is actually just to go to this brush tool right here. Then you can just hold shift on your keyboard and pretty much click on any note you want to lower. Now let's add some more perks. Let's see if we can fit the nice open hat as well. A bit of a shorter one, this one, so I'm just turning up the out knob. Sounds way better. That's pretty much perfect. Now I think it's time for the 808. So I'm gonna go into this 808 folder and see if I can find a nice one. Yeah, I think this gear 808 is gonna fit perfectly. Yeah, it's a nice bounce. Let's add a kick to that 808 so it hits harder. So I'm using this love kick right here, but I'm just gonna boost it a tiny bit so it hits nice and hard. So I'm just going to try to move this a bit. Yeah, that's a nice bounce right there. So I'm quickly just going to raise this beat and then I'll actually take you guys through the whole arrangement. All right, so in the intro, we have the piano and the normal vocal. Shut up, Marco. Marco. Then for the first part, we have the second vocal. Super nice 808 and kick pattern right there. For the second part, we have this coming in. So I'm teasing a higher pitched vocal that comes later for the verse. Or I have this second vocal but pitched up by one octave. Move a little water drop right there right before the 808. Now we have the same part as this. Then we pretty much have the intro all over again, right before it drops to another hook. 